Let's dive deeper into the action with our markets reporters. Let's get underneath these indices. Abigail, what were you watching at the close? Well, with that whopping move lower for the S&P 500 in the context of so many small moves recently, I'd like to take another look at this volatility chart. What we're looking at here in blue, the S&P 500, in yellow, the VIX, or the quote-unquote fear index. In white, we have the skew index. That's often called the panic index. It's far out of the money puts. And the reason I want to take a look at that skew index, well ahead of the fourth quarter volatility last year, months in advance, skew index index, uh, it had been uh, elevated, sharply elevated, while the VIX was basically sleeping. So a big tell on the volatility we saw to the downside. And then the fourth quarter happened, stocks fell, the VIX spiked higher, skew came off. This year, we see these volatility indexes basically subdued and stuck in a range as the S&P 500 is at this all-time high or near an all-time high, not putting one in today. Uh, but we do have the skew index back on the rise. The reason I point this out, Sarah, again, it was rising well in advance of last year's uh, volatility. Something to keep an eye on here, especially when we've basically been in a period of pretty strong complacency, Sarah. Abigail, well, I've been watching the all-telling yield curve. If you look at the spread between two-year and 10-year Treasury yields, we're seeing a flattening today for the sixth straight day. That it was actually the longest streak of flattening since all the way back in August of 2018, not even this most recent August. And as you can see here, if you do look at the spread now, standing at roughly 15 and a half basis points, so still healthily in positive territory. However, we are starting to get towards the lower end of that range that we were in for quite a while before that intense flattening that we saw this most recent August. So where is this really coming from? It's really a bull flattening being driven by the long end of the curve. If you look at the short end of the curve, that's more so anchored due to Fed expectations being on hold. But you look at the 10-year right here, as Katie was just mentioning on the desk, really under an immense amount of pressure as we see bond buying of concerns over Hong Kong, also uncertainty over a phase one trade deal. In just the past six days, we've seen the 10-year Treasury yield now fall 20 basis points alone. Taylor. Well, I am taking a look at the S&P 500 and with record highs earlier this week, even with a little bit of that pullback today, you're looking at valuations that are near those cycle highs. If you come and take a look at a chart that I'm showing in my terminal, it is all about that forward P.E. ratio coming in now at 17.6 times. You have to go all the way back to February of 2018 to get the ratio this high again. Interestingly enough, RBI analysts say it was not all scary news going into the earnings season. On the price side of things, uh, the third quarter earnings has been very solid in the past few years, so that is expected to move the numerator higher. On the denominator side of things, BI analysts are saying that they were looking for an earnings per share growth drop of about 3.8 percent. That means a lower denominator. All of those factors means that forward P.E. ratio still climbing a little bit higher. 